Um, we're going to jump right into um, County Council, uh, Assistant County Council Joel Ellingwood from San Diego County to talk to us about the 9111 report, which is essentially a report that the county is able to um, have uh, created on their behalf uh, to show the economic impacts of what would happen if the uh, voter initiative that will be on the ballot this November is passed. Um, because um, it's important to know all the uh, economic impacts. And again, Joel isn't here to advocate for any position and the county cannot do that. I'll say that, I'm sure he'll say that as well. He's just here to present facts um, and um, he'll present the study to us. And Joel, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you for being here on such short notice. I really appreciate that. Sure, thank you very much. Um, so in addition to fiscal, I'm gonna share my screen uh, and uh, uh, with the uh, presentation on it. Um, uh, so are, is that what you're seeing now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so just a little background on myself. I've been with the county almost three years now. Uh, previously was uh, a deputy county council in Humboldt County for four years. And I've been in, uh, I've been a, a lawyer for over 40 years originally in New Jersey and then in California since 1984 and land use and environmental law and election law are areas of, of, of my practice. So um, let's see here. Um, uh, so the, um, one of the things that the county council does is prepare uh, the ballot title and summary that is attached to uh, the petitions uh, and was published prior to uh, the circulation of the petition. County Council's office also prepares a summary and analysis of the uh, effects of the um, initiative that will be in the voter information guide. Um, and that is, again, supposed to be neutral uh, <clears throat> in, in terms of uh, accurately uh, describing it. But the other thing that the elections code allows is for the Board of Supervisors to order a, um, a report on the potential impacts of an initiative measure uh, that's in elections code section 9111, that, hence the 9111 report in the title. Uh, and so uh, the title that we gave this initiative is reflected in the title on the first slide here. That's an initiative to amend the county general plan uh, to remove the commercial, regional, and thoroughfare node designations and to require voter approval for any future general plan amendment that would redesignate agricultural, rangeland, or rural land, land use designations to other uses. Uh, and I, I say land use designations because that's what the, the term used in the general plan. The press coverage that you uh, have seen and probably other discussion refer to zoning. And this does not affect zoning except that zoning must be consistent with the general plan under California law. And the initiative says once this initiative passes and uh, the uh, commercial uh, nodes are removed from the general plan. The county is directed to then rezone the property um, uh, to be consistent with the general plan. So it's a, it's a secondary step for implementation of the measure if it passes. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the presentation that I'm going through was prepared by uh, Doug Svensson, uh, a consultant with Applied Development Economics uh, in San Jose. And um, uh, so uh, apologies to him if I botch uh, uh, his, his summary of this project. So uh, we, we're gonna have a brief description of the initiative, the impacts to the county general plan development potential, fiscal effects, ability to, of the county to attract and retain businesses, effects on infrastructure uh, development and financing, uh, housing, transportation, 
and agricultural lands and open space. Those are all elements of, uh, of a 9111 report under the elections code. So uh, as I say, it uh, would uh, remove the commercial regional nodes, uh, which are along Highway 101 at Betabel Road, Highway 129, Livestock 101, and San Juan Road. And then there are nine commercial thoroughfare nodes at, at other intersections uh, throughout the county uh, that you're all familiar with. Uh, uh, Highway 25 at Shore Road and also in Tres Pinos, Shore Road at San Felipe, Union Road at San Benito Street, Highway 156 at uh, uh, different intersections at Fairview, Union, San Felipe, uh, Highway 25, and San Juan Hollister Road. <clears throat> uh, so future uh, development in the unincorporated county would be limited to three existing commercial neighborhood nodes at Fairview Road and Fallon Road, Highway 25 and Fairview Road, and Highway 25 at Picenas. And there are previously designated commercial neighborhood areas of small scale in Aromas, Picenas, and Tres Pinos. So um, uh, there are exempted from the initiative three specific plan areas in the county, which include Santana Ranch, uh, uh, the um, uh, Fairview Corners uh, at Highway 125 in Fairview, which includes the Gabilin uh, campus and, um, uh, and San Juan Oaks, uh, or areas that are designated for residential mixed use uh, in the county, which uh, are limited. So any uh, change from agriculturally designated land use would require voter approval uh, through the year 2050. And that voter approval would be necessary for general plan amendments to implement the uh, new community study areas in Balsa, Fairview, San Juan, or Union that are uh, identified in the 2035 San Benito County General Plan. Uh, uh, let me just uh, address that a bit. Um, one of the things that affects the potential for development is uh, applicants uh, want to be able to appropriately assess risk and proceed with uh, entitlement process with a reasonable predictability and uh, time frame. And when you introduce the additional element of requiring voter approval, it increases the risks and the time, uh, which are uh, the developers among you can, uh, can address what an anathema that is to uh, your uh, feasibility analysis for uh, pers uh, pursuing uh, development entitlement. At a certain point, it becomes, um, it becomes uh, too risky, uh, takes too long and costs too much. Uh, there is the cost of holding an election which would be borne by the applicant as well. Um, uh, uh, I can't give you an estimate of it, exactly what the county's costs are that would be borne, but of course then there are the campaign expenses and so on. So uh, that requirement, uh, would, from a land use perspective, uh, inhibit uh, potential economic development in the county. Uh, but the feasibility, the uh, economic impact analysis uh, was um, uh, prepared by uh, Mr. Svensson uh, for, at, at two um, timeframes. One would be a full build out of all of the nodes and how long that would it ta take, if it would ever occur, is, is uh, pretty speculative. So they looked, uh, 
uh, he looked at a shorter time frame, what would be reasonably expected by 2035. And that's a smaller footprint of uh, uh, 1.86 million square feet of commercial development and uh, an estimate of 43,000, uh, 44,300 jobs. Um, uh, so loss of that development potential uh, for that initial uh, estimated feasible time period of 2035 would be um, $6.6 .6 million per year. Uh, and I'll let Gabe address what impact that potentially would have on the current county budget uh, or uh, at full build out uh, a potential of potentially uh, $37.7 million annual additional revenue. Um, uh, it goes without saying there's very, there's very little commercial development or uh, generation of sales uh, tax or transit occupancy tax in the county uh, currently. Uh, where we rank probably in the bottom 10% statewide among counties in a uh, per capita uh, amount of uh, revenue from those sources. Uh, the intent of the general plan in establishing the commercial nodes was to change that perspective. And so uh, the uh, proponents, um, you know, want to reverse that uh, element of the of the general plan that was approved in 2015. Uh, yes, and Joel, if you want me to kind of add on a little bit more on the fiscal effects. Um, right, so the what is the current annual budget of the county? So, Gabe? yeah, yeah, if you don't mind me, uh, my name is Gabriel Orozco. I'm the budget officer for San Benito County. Um, so right now, our current annual budget uh, total county budget is you know, roughly around 200 million. Uh, what we presented to the board this last year, or I guess this, you know, a couple of weeks ago, was about 230 some thousand, uh, 230 some million dollars worth. Um, we had a lot of uh, capital uh, projects through one-time money that were presented, but taking all those one-time costs out of our budget, what we're roughly left with is somewhere around the two, $200 million budget. Um, our general fund consisting somewhere around 60 million of that 200 million. Um, and one of our biggest uh, areas of, um, I guess, uh, drawback is that the general fund in terms of where we're able to generate revenue are pretty limited to um, the areas that we can um, have access to. So for example, sales tax through initiatives, for example, we have one uh, brought in through um, uh, our own administration office with some of the collaboration from other departments to bring up a sales tax initiative. Um, well, we brought it up to the board. They didn't think it was the right decision right now in current economic situation. So. Uh, we didn't move forward with that. So looking at, you know, different options, for example, looking at cannabis, we've been redoing some of the uh, uh, different um, uh, um, ordinances and resolutions around uh, the cannabis and the licensing to make it a little bit more streamlined, more in, more in, <clears throat> more in line with what the state has. So looking at, you know, leaving no stone unturned. Ultimately, what we have in the county is, <clears throat> and we've had over over um, the last you know couple of years, is a lack of growing revenues. Um, what this project could potentially bring is um, more revenues uh, to the county, ongoing and uh, reoccurring revenues, not one time. There will be one time uh, increases due to. Um, the build out, but reoccurring revenues, as Joel had mentioned, um, were very limited. Um, I believe there's one gas station in the whole unincorporated area. Um, the different uh, nodes would potentially bring in the possibility to put some 
or even some lodging um, or some retail or some restaurants there. So all this would do is essentially put some money back into the county uh, for the county to be able to make sure that there are enough services being provided in the community, whether that's maintaining the roads through our public works or that there are enough deputies out there patrolling the streets through our sheriff's office, making sure that even within our county that spans over here from Santa, Santa Clara County all the way down south to uh, Monterey County and South County way down there, um, that some emergency were to take place, we have enough deputies so we can send some all the way down there and be able to take care of different situations. So as our county kind of continues to grow one year after the next, we are still faced with limited revenues and what uh, some of these different um, projects <clears throat> That are underway they could hey, Gabe, uh, i don't mean to interrupt you i really apologize i just wanted to let you guys know we have about another five minutes so about 12 25. okay well um, just just for time time yeah, yeah, sure. there, uh, <laughs> so you. we're gonna we're gonna i will provide a, a copy of this uh presentation uh to, for you to circulate amongst yourselves uh if you decide to create some kind of a committee or whatever to take a position or campaign uh, on this, and you have further questions about the contents of these reports, uh, we can we can answer those questions for you. Um, but uh, uh, the next slide just illustrates um, the fact that we were taught the figures I was providing to you before just have to do with the county general fund, but other local agencies uh, would um, uh, potentially benefit from the the uh, revenues generated by development of the commercial nodes um, as indicated in this slide. Um, so uh, 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 another aspect of the, uh, let's see, uh, of the initiative is that it would require uh, voter approval for the John Smith the, this slide has been corrected, but the John Smith Road landfill expansion uh, and uh, that uh, if that expansion doesn't occur, if the voters, uh, if it's presented to the voters and is not approved, uh, it would impact the uh, revenue source that comes from uh, the landfill from uh, importation of, of waste from out of county. Um, uh, and that's uh, estimated over the next kind of foreseeable time period of, uh, of 15 years at $69.4 million and over the life of the landfill, which would then be estimated to be 60 years as much as $400 million. Uh, and that doesn't take into account landfill gas royalties if, if that ends up as an aspect of the project. So then there are one-time uh, revenue losses uh, that uh, are also involved uh, because of development impact fees or use taxes on construction materials that are outlined here, $37 million in impact fees, $2.2 million uh, in uh, uh, sales tax on construction materials. Um, and again, those are that would be shared both by the county and the council of governments, which funds transportation projects. Uh, so, um, uh, as I began uh, my presentation, this would significantly in cost, increase the cost and risk associated with economic development in the unincorporated <laughs> county and discourage many businesses from locating in the county. Um, and uh, if voter approval was not uh, granted for notes development, uh, it would also impact the potential for new jobs uh, from that uh, commercial development. <clears throat> uh, it has, the impact would have limited uh, effect on um, meeting housing goals but transportation uh, 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 would impact the jobs, housing imbalance that currently exists um, and uh, make it more 
difficult to, to implement the new community's planning policies. Uh, the uh, development of the commercial nodes would have limited impact on displacement of uh, farmland uh, that's rated prime or farmland of uh, statewide importance. Uh, um, and in conclusion, add, the initiative measure adds a requirement for voter approval uh, and it would impact a significant amount of employment generating businesses. Uh, it, uh, if the development doesn't occur because of the voter approval requirement, it would entail significant losses of revenue for county government and other local agencies. Uh, it would uh, reduce the ability to create jobs for local residents and reduce traffic impacts from commute trips. And uh, while it may reduce the amount of development on agricultural land, it would not reduce all development as residential growth could still occur in some areas. So that's, uh, there is a, a great deal of fine grain detail in the reports themselves, uh, which um, I will um, provide to you for your consideration. So I'd be happy Thank to you. entertain any questions. Thank you, Joel. I think what we'll do is um, we're going to move on just so we don't run over. Um, I do really sincerely appreciate you guys coming in. And uh, this is great. Um, I actually answered a few of the questions that I had, and I've been paying close attention to this. Thank you very much.